It may have started as a simple extension of a subdivision of Electronic Arts, but it wasn't long before EA Sports NHL became a household name in the world of video games. A nearly 30-year-old series that continues on to this day because of innovation, and a fan base that can be compared to any of the other hardcore groups in the gaming industry. But what was once viewed as a seemingly unstoppable titan in the world of sports video games nearly collapsed under itself before laying out a new foundation as it looks to rise back up to prominence in the sports video game world. This is the story of EA Sports NHL. Sports Gamers Online is the number one source for the sports gamer. Back in the early 1990s, Electronic Arts was still getting its feet wet in the sports gaming industry. The company had released John Madden Football to much praise, but the ultimate goal was to become a major player for fans of each of the major sports, whether it be football, baseball, basketball, soccer, or hockey. In 1991, EA dipped into the hockey market with the release of NHL Hockey on the Sega Genesis and Master Drive. It was the first officially licensed NHL video game to feature both authentic teams and players. And though its reception was pretty positive for the most part, it was clear that this was the first effort for a project that was planned for growth. NHLPA Hockey 93 released the following year with the addition of fighting, and fans flocked to the game. The improved gameplay showed players that EA, now using the newly created EA Sports Network or EASN, was prepared to take the NHL series to heights never thought imaginable. What they didn't expect, however, is just how far the next installment would take them. In the fall of 1993, EA Sports released NHL 94 for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Now there was a PC version released technically, but it was just EA Sports NHL Hockey and not the game that everybody remembers. For NHL 94, although fighting was removed, the game introduced a mechanic that would change hockey video games forever and shoot the series up the popularity charts. For the first time in an NHL video game, fans were able to utilize a one-timer in order to try and beat opposing goaltenders. This new mechanic blew the doors off a game that seemed to struggle to find its scoring touch in the first two releases. NHL 94's one-timer feature may have been considered cheese to some, but it allowed players to have contests ending in scores of 5-4 and 6-5, as opposed to every other game ending 1-0 or 2-1. It made the game much more fun for everyone involved. After all, isn't that the point of video games? To be fun? Also added in NHL 94 was the breaking of glass, a regular season mode, shootout, and playoffs. The game became so popular that it still receives yearly graphic and roster updates from dedicated fans by way of NHL94.com. And it's not the only iteration of the series that has that luxury, but we'll get into more on that later on. NHL 94 was so well regarded that it's even gone on to be named one of the best video games of all time, let alone sports games. After the success of NHL 94, EA Sports had a franchise that continued on an upswing throughout the next few installments thanks to improvements in modes, graphics, and gameplay features. With competition from the likes of ESPN NHL Hockey, Brett Hall Hockey, and NHL Breakaway among others, it just made sense for the company to continue improving on the already solid foundation they had built in order to avoid being overtaken. NHL 95 introduced a fully featured season mode for players, as well as the introduction of player creation, editing, trading, and signing. It was the first time fans could put themselves into the game to play alongside their favorite players from the NHL. NHL 95 also improved on NHL 94's great gameplay mechanics by adding drop passes, fake shots, and the ability to block shots. NHL 96 brought back the fighting engine for the series, as well as improved the game's realism with the inclusion of double minor and major penalties to the mix. The PC version also debuted multiple camera angles for the series, allowing 2D sprites in a 3D environment. With the release of NHL 97, EA Sports had to deal with a bit more competition in 1996. Because of the competition from games like NHL Faceoff and NHL Powerplay, the developers had to up the ante by using a full 3D engine with motion-captured players for the very first time. The game also featured Jim Houston of Hockey Night in Canada fame as the official play-by-play -play voice. 
The series only continued its upswing as games like NHL Breakaway and NHL Hits came and went after failing to grab a significant share of the hockey market. And while the game's installments over the next few years did receive a positive reception, it was the title released in fall of 2003 that had fans and critics alike buzzing. NHL 2004 was viewed by many as the game that really took the EA Sports NHL franchise over the top. Not only did the game feature the addition of three new leagues, but the gameplay and puck improvements helped make NHL 2004 not only the best hockey game on the market, but the best sports game of the year. On the ice, puck control was improved along with the game's skating and checking mechanics. And off the ice, an overhauled franchise mode known as Dynasty Mode was put in place that allowed arena and personnel upgrades, scouting of players, and complete control of your franchise. NHL 2004 was so well respected that like NHL 94, it still receives yearly content updates. The NHL 2004 rebuild takes the updates to a whole new level in the forms of multiple scoreboard displays, updated logos, jerseys, face structures, arenas, and more. There's even an online league for players to take part in. But despite the game's popularity and success, there was another title that tried to come in and steal some of that thunder after a bit of a hiccup with the series during the mid-2000s. After the juggernaut that was NHL 2004, EA Sports clearly looked to ride the wave of momentum into next year with NHL 2005. Unfortunately, things just didn't feel right for players. The fact that there weren't major changes to the game, as well as the feeling that the changes made hindered the experience more than anything, led to a negative response to the title. Meanwhile, rival 2K Sports released NHL 2K5 with a price point of just $20, making it much more enticing to fans than the $50 offering for a league that didn't even have a season during the 0405 league year. NHL 2005 sales suffered, only shipping approximately 680,000 units compared to the 1.3 million copies that NHL 2K5 sold. Whether it was due to competition from 2K Sports or the NHL's lockout, it clearly wasn't a good year for the series from Canada. But it wouldn't be long before the series rebounded in a big way. After a decent outing with NHL 2006, EA Sports made a strong debut on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 consoles in 2006 with the release of NHL 07. Overhauled visuals, presentation which included new commentary from Gary Thorne and Bill Clement, and gameplay put a much needed breath of fresh air into the franchise. The big improvement that added a sense of realism to the series was the introduction of the skill stick. Instead of using buttons to deke and shoot, players would control their stick entirely on their own via the analog stick. NHL 08 added new deke abilities by using your stick with just one hand, adding a whole new way to dangle around your opponents and score the highlight-worthy goals. This new skill stick paired with modes like Be A Pro which debuted in NHL 09 and allowed you to control a player from minor league prospect to NHL superstar, along with EA Sports Hockey League that allowed fans to put together a team of friends and face other teams online for league dominance, ultimately put the EA Sports NHL franchise over the top for players. Sales nearly doubled from NHL 08 to 09 as modes were improved while competition crumbled. Ultimately, the 2K series ceased to exist on consoles after it became apparent it was more harmful than beneficial to try and compete against the EA Sports NHL machine. This left the game unopposed on consoles. The series continued to see sales success even after becoming the lone NHL video game offering and no longer offering the title on PC, making consoles the only place you can play. The release of NHL 13 in 2012 saw the game break opening week sales records by selling nearly 500,000 copies at launch. Unfortunately, however, after the resounding success that the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 generation of games had, the next one would get off to a rather inauspicious start. With the transition to new consoles in the form of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, many were excited about what the NHL development team would do for the next generation of gaming. But while the hype was incredibly strong, Fans were left disappointed, and even angry, by what they received from EA Sports with NHL 15. After taking an extra year to get ready for a next-gen debut, NHL 15 was released with plenty of features missing, as well as current features and modes that had become extremely stale to fans. Gone was the popular EA SHL, GM Connected was wiped out, Be A Pro had been watered down completely, and standard Be A GM mode was pretty boring and dull. The only mode that was somewhat in-depth was Hockey Ultimate Team, which didn't sit well with fans due to it being a mode that's microtransaction heavy. 
Sure, the game featured new broadcast presentation features in the form of the NBC Sports crew of Doc Emmerich and Eddie Olchek and TSN's Ray Ferraro, but even that came off as repetitive, forced, and dull. Frame rate issues plagued the pre-game cutscenes, and the on-ice gameplay just seemed slow and lacking of any sort of redeeming value. Because of the negative outlook on the game before and after its launch, NHL 15 sold less than 100,000 units during its first week on the market. There's no doubt that this was a dark time for a franchise that had been so well regarded for the past decade plus. To make matters worse, it was later learned that the game had lost developers due to the production of the upcoming EA Sports UFC title, but that didn't ease the mind of fans. If anything, it just may have made them angrier knowing that something they loved was depleted for something else. After that disappointment that was NHL 15, EA Sports looked to rebound in a big way with NHL 16. Back was a retooled EASHL, as well as improved on-ice gameplay and physics. However, the game still featured stale Be A Pro and Be A GM modes, and didn't get player customization until a post-launch patch after fan complaints. This led fans to continue to wonder if the game would ever get back to the glory it once had. With NHL 17, however, fans saw an overhauled franchise mode that brought back the ability to upgrade your arenas, manage your organization's finances, satisfy owner requirements, and even relocate your team. Moving to NHL 18, players saw a new mode called NHL 3's debut, bringing an arcade mode to the series along with an expansion feature within the game's franchise mode. With NHL 19, EA Sports added the world of Chell Player Hub and a brand new overhauled scouting system. With each release of the generation, it was clear that EA Sports was attempting to add depth to a game that was starting to feel stale in other areas mainly with the presentation and visuals due to being on an aging engine, while other EA Sports titles like FIFA and Madden moved to the newer, albeit controversial, Frostbite engine. NHL 20 marked another turn for the franchise, at least from a presentation standpoint. Out was the repetitive and stale NHL on NBC broadcast, and in its place was a custom-built package featuring new graphics and a new broadcast team. James Sabolski took over play-by-play -play duties, while Ray Ferraro moved from third man to the main color analyst. The new calls and graphics package gave off an arcade-like feel, but it was something different. It was a chance that EA took in order to have a broadcast that conveyed emotion and captured the moments playing out on the virtual ice. The EA SHL has never been stronger aside from the lack of a practice mode, and modes like Franchise offer immense replay value for players. Though Be A Pro has seemingly remained an afterthought mode for the developers and players, making it the least played single player career mode in sports gaming today. On the ice, the gameplay has come as close to the Xbox 360 and PS3 days as ever before, and NHL 20 can be argued as the best NHL game to appear on PS4 and Xbox One. Now don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean the series is back to where it was pre-PS4 Xbox One, but it's without a question a good sign, especially when you look at what's around the bend. The series is at the end of a current generation, and now the question becomes, will EA Sports be ready for the jump? Will they learn from the mistakes of the last generation leap, or is history doomed to repeat itself when the series comes to the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X? It's safe to say that only time will tell. For more sports gaming history and features like this, leave a like on this video, subscribe to Sports Gamers Online, and turn on your notifications so you never miss a thing. And let us know in the comment section below what series or game you'd like to see us take a deep dive into the history of next.